it's just awesome <laughs> reading a book like this because you know this is an author who is like a master at their craft. So hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Blake the Book Eater. If you want to see more of my bookish content, you can subscribe down below and also follow my socials. Um, but today I'm bringing you a reading vlog for the Broken Earth trilogy. And so this trilogy is a post-apocalyptic dystopian fantasy sci-fi novel or series trilogy by N.K. Jemisin. Um, so far I've only read um, one short story by N.K. Jemisin called Emergency Skin and that short story was brilliant, it was amazing, and I love the prose. Um, so just going into this trilogy, I have the suspicion that I'm going to love it. Um, just because there's been an overwhelmingly positive reception of it. And so uh, we are going to just kind of, I'm going to check in as I read each book. And yeah, we're just going to go. And then um, I'm going to have my wrap up of the series at the very end. So there will be chapter, chapter times down in the description below if you would like to skip around. I'm going to talk about each book, I think, just little portions, uh, maybe some non-spoilery bits. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just link in the chapter. I don't know what I'm doing yet, okay? This is before this all happens. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna jump into the fifth season. Hey guys, so I apologize for not checking in, but I have uh, just finished the fifth season last night, and holy wow, this book was so good. Um, I couldn't really check in because I tore through this book really fast. Um, I mean, not really, actually, but I just felt like it. Like, I felt like there was no point where I could really stop and, like, do a check-in. Um, <laughs> so we're just going to talk about the whole book. A uh, little bit of non-spoilery, and then I'm going to talk about some spoilers. So um, just this, just in general, I would say if you're thinking about picking up this book, please give it at least 100 pages because this book is very confusing at first. Uh, N.K. Jemisin throws you in with kind of no knowledge of the world or explanation of what's going on. You have to understand everything through context. Um, and that's kind of a big pill to swallow for a lot of readers. Um, I, yeah, I read a lot. And even like for the first like kind of 50 pages, I was like, I don't know what's going on. Like, is it going to be like this for the rest of the book? I, uh, but then, then it clicks. There's a moment where your brain just starts to put things together and you understand what the characters are talking about and just kind of their relationships and what they're going through and you're like, okay. And I think the heart of this is um, just very relatable characters. We have three main characters. We have Essen, who is you. And Essen's POV are all described as you. It's all second person. Um, which might be jarring to some people, but honestly, I did not have a problem with it at all. Like when we were in Essence POV, I was like, okay, it's me, I am Essen. Um, and it was just so fascinating, like having your story told to you. Um, I loved it, I loved it so much. And Essen, uh, she comes home one day to find that her son has been murdered by uh, her husband and that her daughter is gone presumably kidnapped. And so this just starts her journey. Um, she is an orogene, and in this world, orogenes are people who can kind of control like the seismic energy of the earth. And so people who have like, um, who are orogenes are, um, they have orogeny, orogeny, don't know how to say it, but people who have this ability are not looked upon very well. They're discriminated against by the society. They have a uh, derogatory term that is very much like a real world slur that we will not use here. And so I think it's very important for people to understand that I can Jemison as a black woman um, kind of I think very realistically folded her own experiences as a black woman into this book, but just through the lens of people discriminating against people with these abilities. And um, like there are hate crimes, there are lynchings per se, um, and it's it's not it's not a pleasant place for um, people with this ability because they cannot control who they were born as or what they appear to be to other people. And so that theme was, I thought, a very strong one and a very good one. 
But um, yeah, so S N U um, are an origin, and you cannot, con or you can control your abilities, but your son could not, and that is why your husband killed him, and. It's just kind of heartbreaking just as you get her journey. And then also, uh, the fifth season itself refers to a um, portion of time because there's so many people with this, um, with Orogeny, uh, the earth kind of moves a lot. And with that, we have, you know, ash clouds, we have massive explosions and eruptions. And so about like every hundred years or so, um, sometimes sooner, sometimes l longer, um, we have these things called fifth seasons, which are like m basically massive apocalyptic events. And they're apocalyptic to varying degrees. But as at the start of this story, there is a pretty intense fifth season starting that's going to last a long time, it looks like. So basically, we're on the brink of the apocalypse and Essen is trying to hunt down her son's murderer. And it's so good, it's so, so good. Um, and so that's Essen. And then we also have um, Cyanite, how is how you think you say it and cyanite is studying at the fulcrum and this is kind of more in the past the other two povs are in the past while essence is like in the present um so cyanite is studying at the fulcrum which is in kind of like the main capital city it's kind of like an institution for um origins kind of like almost like a magical school except not as nice <laughs> and um so that's how we kind of discover more about orogeny just as an art or a science, um, and so yes, this is where we get some more exposition, but also, Cyanite's story is one of the most interesting and one of the most fascinating out of the three POVs, I think, because she goes through so much growth and change, um, and by the end of the book, um, she was one of my favorite characters out of the three, um, and I don't want to spoil anything, but it's just really good. And then lastly, we have Demaya, who is a like a child Orogen who is found by a guardian and is being brought to the fulcrum um, and kind of the, the journey that she goes through as well. And I would like these three characters were just so, so well developed um, and their stories like tie together in interesting ways. And um, I just love this world so much. By the end, I was just so invested in everything that was happening. And oh, I loved it so much. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about spoilers for like a little bit, just a little bit. So I'm gonna have a little spoiler tag right here. You can skip to the next if you wanna skip. <laughs> Chapter times below. Okay, so brief spoilers about the fifth season. So the best thing about it is that the three the three POV characters are one, they're one character, um, which was so, I loved it so much. Like, you get the reveal that Demaya turns into Cyanite, and like, I was already kind of suspecting just because of the past timelines, but then once Demaya was confirmed as Cyanite, I was like, yes, yes, it fits so well. And then I was like, Cyanite is, is Essen. It's just gonna follow. And then it, and then it was revealed, and it just made me so happy because um, their storylines were so different, but they also felt so cohesive in a way that was very hard to describe. And so like having it confirmed as the same character, mm, brilliant, fucking brilliant. And just my heart broke so much during this book. There's so much like heartbreak and terror for people who are origin and because our main character is an origin, we see that, especially with um, the nodes. That broke my heart so much. Um, and, uh, you know, spoiler section. So the nodes, they were, you know, these origins, these childs who, or these children who could not be controlled. And so they were taken and supposedly taken care of and you know taught to just still the earthquakes in certain areas except they were hooked up to machines uh, put under and in a lot of pain and horribly abused by the people who were supposed to protect them and that just mm -hmm. 
that got to me so much and I just felt Essence heartbreak and also Alabaster. Oh, I did not talk about Alabaster in the non spoilery section, but oh my God, Alabaster is the best. Um, oh, I kicked the camera, sorry. But, and then Alabaster and Cyanide's relationship I think was the most nuanced thing of the entire book because they obviously don't like each other and they're forced to have sex with each other, which is not a comfortable situation. I don't want to say it's rape because they both consented to it even though they didn't want to do it. It was just a very uncomfortable situation, especially because Alistair is gay or Alabaster is gay. And so there, there's just so many levels of wrongness to that um, sexual relationship that was forced upon them that they felt like they had to maintain in order to survive. But then of course, at the end, you just see the glimpse of their happiness when they get into a polygamy, polygamist relationship with Inan and they're happy and they have a child together. Um, that just like, and then of course it all comes crashing down because fucking Shafra shows up. And so, like, this book was just so well done and like the fever pitch of like shit happening was just insane. Um, and then we had Essen with Hoa and then we discover that Tonki is the girl from, um, Demaya's childhood. It, the, just the way everything just tied together in such a beautiful way and I loved it and the way this book ended with Alabaster asking about do you know what a moon is? I think I know where this is going and I'm scared but also excited because mm, like and even like after I finished the book I went back to the very beginning and read um, just like the first chapter, like bits of it over again, which makes so much more sense after finishing the book. So like at the beginning where you're confused, you understand that like the ending was laid out for you and it was literally one of the first things that you read. Um, so masterful, so well done. Easy five out of five stars for me. And yeah, wow. Hey guys, so fifth season is out of the way and we are just starting the obelisk gate. So... I filmed my fifth season portion yesterday and today because I needed a little bit of brain break to just kind of sit with that information. <laughs> but now we're getting into the obelisk gate and I'm very excited to get into this. Uh, I've read the first like two chapters because I just couldn't help it. And we're getting a Nassin POV, which is Essen's daughter, which is your daughter. Um, which is awesome. Uh, we're also getting your POV again. And we are also now getting Shafa's POV, which is kind of scary. Uh, he is the guardian that Demaya knew as a child, and he is a scary character. Um, so now we're in his head. So I love the fact that we are now shifting POVs, because I loved spending time with those characters, but I feel like, or in the first book, but I feel like their stories were told and tied up very well, um, and I love Essen, so I'm glad that her POV is back. Uh, and yeah, it's, so I, I just, going into this, I, I want more answers about the world and things that are coming, like the obelisks and the moons, and um, I'm just very excited because I was just so blown away by the fifth season. Like, and I knew I was, I was expecting to like it, but I was not expecting to just like love it as much as I do. And this world and these characters are so amazing. And so I'm just so excited to get into this. So for this one, I will bring you check-ins because I completely forgot with the first one, but this one, you're gonna get check-ins. So see you guys. Hey guys. So I'm not doing my normal setup right now because I'm tired and I don't want to do it. But I am about like 250 pages in to the Obelisk Gate, um, which I've read over the last couple days uh, over the weekend. And um, wow, this book is even better than the first one maybe? I don't know, we'll, we'll have to see when it ends up. But like this book is just, it's so good because it explains things that you didn't know needed explaining. And then as it gives you answers, it just causes you more questions, but in a way that doesn't feel frustrating. And I'm just so intrigued. 
and the characters are even like they're they're so compelling and the world is amazing and i am just loving this series so 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 much so i will be coming at you guys in just a sec with my thoughts about the book as a whole i'm probably going to finish this either tonight or tomorrow morning so <sighs> this is awesome okay so i just finished the obelisk gate book two, and I am not exactly sure how I feel about it as of right now. Um, I, I just, like, my gut instinct rating was a four star because um, there were parts of the book that felt kind of like a three star, uh, and then there were parts of the book that felt like a five star. So four star for me is kind of where it's at, just kind of, um, I think it did suffer from a little bit of pacing issues because I think while the first book was slow, there was a lot happening, there's a lot going on, and there's a lot of like progression in the story. Whereas in this one, I feel like there there was definitely progression in, in the story, but I mean looking back on it, it almost felt like half a book stretched out into a whole book, if that makes sense. Now, something that I personally really enjoyed was the switching up of the POVs. We had Essen and her daughter Nassen, and also Shafa, who was kind of an antagonist in the first book and exists in this weird kind of gray area in this book. Um, and I wasn't able to really tell where the plot was going to go, uh, <laughs> because in this book we get a lot of explanation as to how certain things work, but I think I did mention, like, you know, it, it does bring up a lot of questions, too. Um, and it makes the already complicated nature of um, Eregeny, like, even more complicated. <laughs> and so it was sometimes hard for me to follow along because I usually read at night, like, kind of like right before I go to bed or like in the morning. Um, I, my days are really busy. So my, like, <laughs> exhausted brain it was like trying to wrap around and like picture and visualize things um, that weren't necessarily always the easiest to picture because a lot of it was very kind of like cerebral or internal um, especially the use of Eregeny um, and so yeah it was uh, it was definitely like a like a like a fun read like there were definitely some high moments and I feel like I, I, I got through this book faster than the first one even though Technically, I read them at about the same time, but I think I blew through a bigger chunk of the second book. Like, I feel like I was more invested, and yet, yeah, obviously, it's the second book. I'm more invested in the characters. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see how the trilogy ends. I might read a little bit of the third book tonight, um, but I definitely have to say, I think the fifth season is like a flat out masterpiece in storytelling, and this, I think, was a good follow-up, but my expectations were where the fifth season was at. And so this book is just kind of like under it a little bit. And so that way I like, I think I am a little bit disappointed, especially in the ending. I think the ending was good and cool, but like didn't nearly carry as much emotional weight as I wanted to. Um, and I think it should have, um, that the first book did so, so well. So that's the end of my non-spoilery thoughts. I'm going to get into spoilery thoughts right now. And then if you want to skip this, Chapter times are down below, and you can see my progress on uh, book three, The Stone Sky. Okay, spoilers. Okay, something I really, really loved about this book was um, finding out who um, the narrator was, uh, the second person. At first, I thought it was Father Earth. Um, that was my uh, kind of guess. Um, because I, like I, we were getting more and more hints that the earth itself was kind of alive and then once we got that confirmation I was like oh fuck like it's she is being watched by the earth but no she was being watched by Hoa and um, I love that because it gives a real sense of intimacy and um, r like real insight into the stone eaters and the stone eaters I don't know if I talked about them in my um, in my fifth season review they're so fascinating they are so weird and um, ancient like I think out of all like the kind of like fantasy 
or sci-fi races that I've ever read, they're one of the most fascinating because they just have a sense of like, I don't know, like immensity to them. Um, and that, you know, isn't helped or is helped by the fact that like uh, when Essen describes them, it's, it's like the weight of mountains like within just kind of like a humanoid form because um, that's how like dense they are. Um, but like even more so than like elves or like old races like that or whatever in fantasy. Um, they just like, they feel ancient. Like they feel like they straight out of the rock itself. Uh, and I love that. Um, especially I loved when we learned that, you know, they were human ones, but they can't remember what it was like because it's been tens, hundreds of thousands of years. And like the loss of memory, the loss of humanity that comes with immortality. Um, and it was it just like things like that, like just like the subtle little world building bits that N.K. Jemisin weaves into the story is just so freaking cool. Um, and I, I just loved all the aspects with the Stone Eaters. Now we got Alabaster back in this book and I think Alabaster was like my favorite character um, in the first book aside from Essen. And here he just, I don't know, he, he feels more flat and that's because he's just kind of up in an, infir in an infirmary the whole time. But it was just, I don't know, like I kind of wanted more from him. Um, and also from, like, I, like Essen's journey and like learning about the obelisks and how they work and putting it together and the magic, I thought that was very cool. But it felt very drawn out. Like I feel like this was stretched a little bit and it didn't need to be necessarily. And kind of on the opposite end of that, w the stuff with the community, there was such a sense of detachment um, with the community of Kastrima. Um, and I wanted like more of an attachment because like that whole like ending sequence kind of really revolves around you, the reader, being really invested in uh, Kastrima and what happens to it. And you're just not because Essen really isn't because she's like, you know, decidedly so though, because you know, they're kind of xenophobic towards her and don't think that origins are people, even though they're living in a community with a lot of origins. And um, Yika, I think was probably the best new character introduced. She was like very kind of backgroundy at first, um, but then like towards the end, she really stepped up and uh, I really respected just her and her position and wanting to keep the community safe and like having the hope and the belief that like they could all work together. Like I loved that character arc so much. Um, and yeah, there were some other crazy things that happened. Alabaster got eaten by the stone eater, or not eaten, he got killed by Essen um, and then became a stone eater at the end. And now we see the same process kind of happening with Essen and Hoa. So that's gonna be interesting to see where that goes. Um, Nassen in this book was fun to read about and I enjoyed her sections with her and Shafa, but they were never as interesting to me as like um, Demaya and Sinite's POVs were in book one. Um, and she almost felt like kind of like a, a Demaya redux and which makes sense because like that's, you know, her mom, the daughter. Um, but yeah, I, I thought her plot was interesting, but it didn't necessarily blow me away when I wasn't super captivated by it. And especially at the end, I was just like, okay, so she's just gonna do the moon thing now. Um, so I'm really hoping that book three is able to kind of subvert my expectations a little bit or just blow me away um, just because parts of this book weren't up to par, but uh, I will have to say the writing was always very stellar. Um, the way that N.K. Jemisin writes really just kind of wraps you up in her storytelling and um, it's just wonderful. It's wonderful to read. Like it, it's, 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 just awesome reading a book like this because you know this is an author who is like a master at their craft and every sentence you read just like it just fits together so beautifully and it's so hard to describe that but it's like when you come across a book and you read it and you just know that it's like it's like basically at the best it can be and i think that prose wise this book was at the best it could be but story wise i wanted a little bit more and so like coming off the fifth season, which I think is a basically perfect book. <laughs> um, I was a little let down, 
but I am very excited going into the final book in the trilogy because I'm just, just I, I, I just want to see how she's going to end it because I literally have no idea what to expect. All I can expect really is that, you know, the moon is coming in and that's going to be a huge thing. Uh, I'm kind of predicting that Essen and Nassen are kind of going to be at odds with each other um, because, you know, we have... Um, two Orogenes, a mother and a daughter, each with their own stone eater on opposite sides of this like uh, inter like eternal war. And so just uh, I don't want my heart to be broken. I don't want shit to like mm, because I really care about Essen. I think uh, I, I was wrapping up the review, but let me talk about Essen for a sec. I really love her character. Like to me, it's just so refreshing to see um, like a middle-aged woman be given so much agency, um, because she is just angry and imperfect. She makes bad decisions, <laughs> bad decisions. She kills people, um, mostly in self-defense. And she also just like has a lot of hurt and isn't like, she doesn't apologize for that. Like, I feel like a lot of the time when I read women who are angry, there's like, there's a moment when they like let their anger go and they're a nice woman again. But that's not who Essen is. Like that kind of like anger is built into her character, that coldness that was like taught to her. Like j there's this wonderfully telling moment when uh, we find out that Essen broke Nassen's hand like exactly the same way that Shafa did when um, she was a child. And it was just reinforcing this cycle of like, this is how it's taught and this is what I'm going to teach. Um, and she did that because she thought that was the most effective way, the most like safe way to raise her daughter. And there's so many like interesting contradictions to her character. And I love that. Um, she feels like a person. She feels like she doesn't feel like a character. Yeah, she feels like a person. Like, um, like I feel like I know Essen and I know who she is. And, you know, part of uh, N.K. Jemisin's brilliance is the fact that she makes that kind of bond with the reader by using, like, second person to refer to you as Essen. So you really just become so connected to this woman. Um, and it's just amazing. So, like... Uh, like I'm just very excited to get into the stone sky and I will see you guys in just a bit. So Hey guys, so I actually didn't find time to Like take a break during this book uh, to stop and record my thoughts just because there was so much happening that was Like it all kind of it was hard to find a place to stop and kind of Compose my thoughts like and even after it because I, I, I just finished I finished this morning, um, and I'm still kind of composing my thoughts about this book. Um, like, it's, it's, a lot happened, okay? A lot happened, and uh, we're going to talk about the non-spoilers, and then we're going to get into the spoiler discussion, um, and then at the very end, I'm going to do a wrap-up of the whole trilogy, so you can jump to that if you want. All the chapter times are down below. Sorry, this is a very long video. It's gonna be a rambly video. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's talk about The Stone Sky. So uh, this book um, took me more time to read than the first two. Uh, it was very slow, I will have to say, but that's not a bad thing. Like, it's weird. <laughs> I described it to my friend. I was like, whenever I pick up this book, I absolutely love this book. But like when I put down this book, um, I don't really have like, I didn't really have like a huge desire to pick it back up, which is weird. Like it's compelling when you're reading it, but it's also very dense. Like that is my one criticism of the trilogy as a whole, which I'll talk about more in my trilogy thoughts. But um, I like it, it, it felt like a lot, like you really have to invest your kind of mind and your mental space going into this just because uh, N.K. Jemisin does throw a lot at you and you just kind of have to roll with it and sometimes it can be a little overwhelming and that's why it wasn't as necessarily compelling as even the first book in the trilogy but 
with all that being said, I think what uh, was accomplished in this book was masterful. Um, like what she was able to do with these characters, with this story, was just astounding. And um, there was a reveal on the last, uh, like in the last couple pages, that uh, I, it wasn't that I didn't see it coming, but I was just like oh my gosh, this makes so much sense. And I just had like this huge smile on my face. Um, it just like, ugh, the characters in this book are just so palpably amazing. Um, they're just so well written, so, so well written. And um, the plot, even, even though I think uh, this book and the trilogy as a whole kind of like really emphasizes character over plot, there is a uh, a very hefty amount of plot in this book, especially because we get kind of the backstory of what happened during the shattering, you know, hundreds of thousands of years ago with um, the first civilization and what they did with the obelisks. And uh, so that backstory was kind of interwoven throughout the main storyline. And honestly, whenever I got to those parts, it was interesting, but I was kind of a little bored just because I was so invested in what was happening with Essen and Nassen that it was hard to really, really care about it. And like, um, I, I think it did pay off in the end, um, but at the same time, uh, it did feel kind of unnecessary. Um, like it, it was, it was, it was like, it was like the frosting on the cake. It's like good and it's like nice when you have like a little bit of it, but then you keep eating the frosting and then you can start to feel sick. <laughs> That's kind of how I felt, because uh, it was just like a lot of exposition with like a lot of like words and new terms that she was throwing at us in this last book. Because um, I feel like the first book was pretty simple, the second book got a little bit more complex, and this one I think is the most complex out of the three. Um, but at the same time like it does make for some of these amazing moments and so like that's why i'm a little bit torn like because i really loved it in the end um but also there were some things that were like a little up and down um but overall would i recommend this book yes a hundred percent uh this this trilogy was fantastic um and this book specifically i think had a lot of very amazing emotional beats and emotional moments that um, I felt was kind of missing from the last book. The first book I think had wonderful like emotional heavy like oh kind of moments um, and the second book I felt was kind of missing some of that but this book really brought home the emotion in the trilogy um, and that's what I care about the most because I really love the characters that uh, N.K. Jemisin has written here and so that emotional tie was just like yes um, and so yes I really liked it I, uh, I actually well I that's a lie I didn't like it I loved it I loved parts of it and then parts not so much but overall I still gave it a 4.5 stars um, I hate that Goodreads does not let you do half stars. <laughs> I do, uh, do upload my reviews on Storygraph now, and Storygraph lets you do half and quarter stars, so they are superior. Anyways, now we're getting into my spoiler thoughts about the stone sky. So if you'd like to jump to my whole trilogy thoughts, you can skip to that, or you can stick around and get spoiled. You shouldn't though, but if you've read it, you can, you can stick around. I don't know, I'm not gonna tell you what to do. This is, you're, you're watching this. I'm not in charge of you, so. Spoilers! Okay, the first thing I wanna say about this book was that <laughs> the, the magic was very confusing. Um, Cause like I got such a good sense of um, originy, uh, originy, but like the magic, I, like there are times when I was like, okay, I'm understanding it and then um, Honestly, all the interludes with um, Syl Anagist were just a lot to process. Um, it was great getting Hoa's backstory and um, like how the Stone Eaters came to their decision to basically break the world. Um, and that was like that last chapter really paid off. And there were some moments during Hoa's backstory that I really um, resonated with, like um, the reveal of like the Briar Patch. I thought was just horrific, um, and such a strong narrative moment. But overall, I felt like the Seal Anagus chapters could have been condensed to like one or two interludes instead of like five. Um, 
kind of like uh, Alabaster's letters that appeared in the second half of this book. Um, they were only in like a chapter or two and they were really, really strong, really poignant when they came in. Um, but they, they never really overstayed their welcome. I thought the, the world of like the past was really interesting, but I couldn't really get a good feel for it. I don't know what it was, uh, about like the description or like lack of description, but it was really hard for me to imagine, um, that like, I felt like the world of the stillness I, I saw, like it was very easy for me to see that. But then when we were talking about this like past society, it, like, I don't know, I just could not picture it at all. Um, so yeah, like that was my, like literally pretty much my only criticism was with the interludes, which I thought I was gonna love, but honestly, I came away with kind of mixed feelings about it. Uh, Cause I wanted to get back to Essen and Nassen's story. Um, I'm gonna give a quick shout out here to the side characters. I really love the side characters, um, especially Tonki. I thought she was fantastic. Um, Lerna, I thought was a great kind of secondary um, source of strength for Essen in this book. And Yika, uh, Yika, I think is she. She was just kind of like strong and steady presence in the last book, and she's just she she still is that strong and steady presence in this book as well. And I really love that. Um, these characters like didn't really like change a whole ton, but at the same time, like I appreciated um, why they were there for what they did for Essen. Um, and let's talk about Essen because Essen, I love her. She is just she has so much that she's constantly going through, and her mental space is not always the best, and she's dealing with like so much trauma. And um, it's really hard for her to trust people. Uh, it's She doesn't even know what is the right thing to do. And this whole book, she's just like coming to the decision that like, you know, she wants to, like she wants to save the world. Um, and that decision for her was tough. Um, Cause she, and that whole time she was like torn between uh, forming a community and like saving her daughter. Um, and so that was just like heartbreaking, but so well written. And then Nassen, you know, I like I hated Shafa when he was first introduced, and then like even in the last book, he was still kind of like I was very wary of him. But in this book, I like you just really see how much he loves Nassen and how much he's caring for her, like as um, her surrogate father. And he really feels like a different person entirely. Um, it doesn't erase, you know, all the bad things that he's done, but you know, he's a being who's lived like thousands and thousands of years and as um I forget who said it i think i think ho was saying it but basically you know the only re reason that he survived oh no it was steel steel was saying it the only reason he survived as a guardian was because he actually cared about the people that he trained and that allowed him to hold on to some semblance of humanity where all the other guardians basically just became mindless instruments of the earth oh my god um yeah, so I, I really like that about Shafa's characterization. Um, and Nassen, oh my god, she... Uh, her character arc, I think, is probably my favorite out of everybody's. I mean, actually, no. Essen is here. Nassen is just, like, right under. Um, Nassen, I think, she was just wonderful. Um, just the angst and the uh, the pain that she felt. I mean, she's only 10. Like, she, this is a 10-year-old child dealing with so much, literally the weight of the world. And she is just, oh my god. It just was so, I really felt for her. Um, and she had, I think, the strongest moment in the entire book, uh, literally a moment that gave me chills, it, when she went through the Earth's core and she saw Father Earth. That, that was one of the craziest moments to me in the last book is when we realized that the Earth was actually alive. That, ooh, I love that so much. And then when like we see like the, the the earth's core oh my god it was oh like i got chills it was just like the the you felt so insignificant and this oh it was just so well written it was so well written it was awesome and i loved it so much i think the the ending battle it was just understandable enough to kind of hit um but that um like the emotional moment, like it, it was crazy because trying to like visual, like whenever I read books, I try to visualize it ha as it would be like, you know, as a movie. Um, and this was like, it was so hard. It was so hard to visualize <laughs> um, because a lot of the things that were happening were very kind of metaphysical. Um, and 
I, I don't know, it wasn't like very easy to depict. Um, but just that moment when Essen gives up and lets Nassen take control, basically killing herself. That was such a strong moment and just showed how much she loved and how much she trusted Nassen to do the right thing. And that is what pushed Nassen to save the world. Um, and that was just so strong that it, it was it was the mother's love. It, it was it was her trust in her child. Even though they hadn't seen each other in years, Nathan felt betrayed by her mother um, and you know the abuse that she endured like and still there was that bond between them that oh it was just like it was like it was such a powerful complex uh, layered moment. Um, that was just so amazing. Uh, and then Nassen turned, or Essen turned to stone. And then uh, the coda I thought was, oh, it just, it touched me because we got to see people, you know, the side characters and uh, Nassen, you know, start to move on and how they are uh, going to kind of face the world together. And then the reveal at the very, very end when we realize that the whole reason this story is being told in second person is be because we realize, you know, that Essen is is you. So you are Essen and you are being told the story. And then in the last book, we found out it was Hoa. Hoa is the one who's telling the story. And in this, we found out why. It's because Essen has become a stone eater and Hoa is telling Essen this story of who she is, so she remembers who she is, so she can maintain parts of herself, and so she won't forget who she is over the thousands of years that she has to live, because we saw what happened to all the other stone eaters who completely forgot who they are. Um, they're, they don't really have a purpose, they're just, you know, it was really only like the three stone eaters who maintained semblances of who they once were that really kind of had the most agency in this story, um, and Oh, like that moment was just so sweet and that and then and and you know you know like Essen's gonna watch over her daughter it's just like this whole trilogy you know it wasn't about big battles it wasn't about you know these crazy magic I mean it like it did have crazy magic stuff and it did have other like you know the races you know like stone eaters and we had like this battle you know to save the planet from the seasons but at its core it was just like a story about the bond between a mother and her daughter and that just it was just so oh it was amazing I loved it so much um and it wasn't like cheesy in a way that like love saves everything but it was just like it, it like <laughs> because love makes us do stupid things, you know, and love makes us do crazy things. And it's not like, you know, these things came out of nowhere, these plot devices, they, they, there wasn't build up, and it, it wasn't a deus ex machina at all. Like, there was so much work put into making the reader understand the relationship between Essen and Nassen and how complex and kind of layered and, you know, not, you know, nice. <laughs> it wasn't, you know, a nice relationship. It was complicated. It was real. It was, oh, th there's just so much nuance to what N.K. Jemisin has done in this trilogy that, like, I would love to go back and reread it because I feel like I would have a completely different experience um, the second time, especially just kind of knowing more about the magic and the world and uh, the characters. Like, um, like this is like she, you can just tell she put so much of her own heart and soul into this narrative um and it was just like really amazing amazing to see um and so like those are the aspects of like that came through which made me kind of bump up my rounding of 4.5 to a 5 on like goodreads um but it's a 4.5 on like storygraph because storygraph lets you do halves and quarters but yeah it's just it, I, it was it was a masterful masterful trilogy and definitely all three books deserved this friggin hugo award like the the trilogy it's one of the best series i've ever read it was insanely memorable um and yeah so now let's talk about the trilogy as a whole so welcome and this is where i'm going to talk about the broken earth trilogy as a whole so this trilogy wow what a wild wild ride um, this is one of my new favorite series of all times, I think. Um, you know, these books aren't perfect. There are some flaws, but overall, 
this is just an astounding achievement of like what can be written like I don't even know how to describe it because literally there there's there's nothing I can comp this trilogy to it it, it is entirely singular it stands on its own so so well um, and the first book the fifth season I think is a absolute masterpiece like this book is a solid five out of five stars it is it is just remarkable in how phenomenal it is. Then we have the Obelisk Gate, and while I feel like this book didn't quite live up to the heights of the first um, and the third book, I still feel like this is a very worthy entry in this series, um, and it had some amazing very intense moments that are very memorable. And the last book, The Stone Sky, I thought was a great finale to the trilogy as a whole. Um, there were some flawed moments in this book, but overall this just brought it home in such a strong, amazing, character-driven way. And so that's why I'm just going to say please go read the Broken Earth trilogy if you have not. This it is an intimidating series. I will give you that because uh, I feel like the book the first book does take a little while to get into for it to really click uh, for you to understand kind of the world that N.K. Jemison has built. But once it clicks it, it just it flows so well and the characters are just so driven and complex and nuanced and the storytelling here is just nothing short of masterful. Like, N.K. Jemisin has really made something amazing here, and I really want more people to read it. I don't know why it's not talked about more. Like, seriously, like, y'all are looking for some amazing uh, books written by black women. This series should be near the top of your list. Like, it is just wow. Like, I need literally everybody to go read the series. Um, it, it, it all, it honestly really astounds me how, you know, certain series on like, you know, book Twitter, book tube, whatever, like they have like eight editions of them. Um, and they're all pretty and they're everywhere. You see fan art of them ever like, and, and, and these books are not talked about at all. Like these books are given dirt. Like I, 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 ugh. Please show this series some love, goddammit. Like, I need like special hardback editions of this. I want like like more fan art. I want uh yeah, I, I want the, the, the TV adaptation to come out like soon. Like I know it's being worked on. Uh this series deserves so, so much that so many like big series by um white authors are getting. It's just like Ah, it's really frustrating. Um, I really just want more, like, more love to be put towards this series because it deserves every ounce of, of that love and that fandom and that crazy, awesome support. And so that's where I'm going to end this review, you know, because, like, I just... I, I can't say anything else other than please go read this trilogy, um, you know, it might not necessarily be for you, but I, I would, I would implore you to try because I feel like if you give this series a chance, you will be surprised at what you take from it and at what you're able to imagine. It literally will expand your imagination because I think N.K. Jemisin has written something that really challenges a lot of the uh, the classic fantasy tropes, the classic sci-fi tropes that we have come to know and kind of expect from these book like works. Uh, uh, and, and this trilogy just really def like defies genre and defies classic story ex expectations and will literally just like change your view on how fiction can be written. Like, I can't say like much more about this trilogy, honestly. Like, please go read it. And with that, we've come to the end of my video. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. If you skipped around, that is also okay, uh, and if you are going to read the trilogy, you can come back and you can listen to my spoilery bits about each book if you would like. Uh, and anyways, that is it. That is it for today. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe for more content like this. Uh, d don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter for more updates, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.